G'day guys, I'm Andrew. I'm going to teach you how to create joists uh, for uh, construction or joist layout or estimating. And we're going to go through a few things uh, inside of uh, the joist tool. And I'm going to go through importing a plan. I'm going to go through uh, creating scenes and how to navigate. So a quick example of that would be a complex model. Uh, inside of complex model, I only want to look at joists only. And I might only want to uh, zoom into particular areas of joists, uh, I can basically go and zoom to my selection. We're going to talk about, uh, go back to here, and we're going to talk about creating a joist layer. We're going to talk about starting uh, joist spacings, uh, whether we're going to start from left or right. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, start with and finish with, so whether we're going to start with a double joist, no joist, single joist, end with, we'll go through that changing joist types. Now to skip through these things, if you already know how to do these, if you look in the video below, you can actually skip through to particular stages of this tutorial. And we're gonna look at adding beams and adding inside of joists, so uh, cutting joists. We're also gonna look at adding connectors to joists. Uh, we're going to look at adding voids, how to add a void in a set of joists. We're gonna look at adding blocking to the end of joists, whether by default when you draw the joists or later. Uh, we're going to look at bearers and joists or girders and joists. We're also going to look a little bit at dimensioning. And if we get some time, we might quickly go into an IFC import from uh, Revit or Archicad and how to actually detail that up uh, using Pluspec. Okay, to start off, we're going to talk about importing a plan, whether it be a DWG or a PDF. I'll quickly give you a rundown. Now, you'll notice inside of Plus Design Build, I have a 2D mode. I'm going to click that 2D mode because basically it's given me a 2D parallel projection, which the majority of us are used to working in. And to do joists, it's easier to work in that mode. I'm going to just select and delete this plan. I'm going to show you how to import one. So if I go File, and then I go Import, and I'm in SketchUp 2020 at the moment. You can do this in SketchUp Pro in previous versions. Uh, and I'm going to go down, I'm going to choose a file type. Now, you could be looking for multiple file types. In this case, I'm looking for a DWG. And basically, it's gone through and it's filtered a DWG. And if I select the DWG and go import, it'll import that DWG file. But I'm going to also show you another way to do that. So I'm just going to get out of that one there. And I'm going to open up another DWG file which is open in another screen. I'll just drag it over so you can see what's going on there. And what I can do is I can actually drag and drop a DWG straight into the model. Now, if I import that, or as I've dragged and dropped and let go of my mouse button, you'll notice it gives me several different options. Now, preserved drawing origin will basically be where the drawing has been drawn by uh, the CAD operator, whoever drew the drawing. I don't really care about the origin because I'm not going to go and put it back into their plan. But if you did, you would then preserve the origin. Uh, you can import materials, which in this case I don't need to, just black and white is fine for me. And reducing file size is always a bonus so you can work more efficient. Merge coplanar faces and also my units that I've set my model to. If you need to know more about this, you can look at uh, getting started with uh, Pluspec. And I'm gonna go okay and you'll know it's telling me what I've brought in. You can actually go and delete these layers as well, if you like, so I'm gonna go close. And you'll notice that it brought this plan in onto my origin, so if I go to 3D view, you'll notice it's at zero, zero, zero. I'm going to go back to my 2D mode, and the next thing I want to do is I actually want to center this in my screen, so I'm just gonna select it, spacebar, select, and I'm going to go right click, and I'm going to go zoom selection, and basically, that plan has now filled my screen in its entirety and we'll show you how to create scenes and how to save those locations uh, in the next tutorial. All right, so now we're gonna talk about creating joists and using scenes to navigate. Uh, so I've got the plan that I've just imported there and there's several ways to create a joist. The first way is to click up here on the joist tool and then click here in the floor joist and now it's going to open up my floor joist tool. And there's several options you can include a floor. They all make a lot of sense, but if you hover over, it'll basically tell you what's going on here and what each of the names are. You can change the names of items in your takeoff, uh, and that would be in your settings tool, which will enable you to change things from, you know, if you call them bearers or whether you call them girders, 
in the takeoff they'll come out that way. However, we're going to talk about creating joists. So first thing, I'm going to go down and I'm going to head down to my joist section and I can close this one up here and I can just look at my joist. I can choose a joist type, whether it be solid timber, uh, LVL, floor trusses, steel, block and beam, if you're in uh, the UK. Uh, I'm going to choose iJoist and I can choose my spacing. And this is a, a demonstration or a, an image showing you what type of joist you're using. And this is the joist size that, that you can choose. Now, if you're using imperial or metric, basically it'd be according to what you've synchronized. If you want to find out about synchronizing uh, materials, just look at, up the synchronized video uh, and that is the synchronized tool there. Okay, so we're going to choose a 240 by 45, which is an eight by two. Uh, and we're just going to start with single and end with single. We'll get into that in a bit more detail shortly. So I can actually draw a joist without selecting anything. I can basically left click my mouse. So first I would go submit, which basically is telling me now's the time to draw a joist. And if I left click my mouse and I move my mouse along, I can type in a measurement here if I want to. I'm just going to leave it at freeform and I can come down and you'll notice that it's actually on an axis. I could draw off an axis, but I actually want to draw on an axis. So it's a green axis and the first line I drew was on my red axis. And I can left click and bang, I have a set of joists. Now you'll notice when I drew those set of joists, they're actually still blue or selected, which means if I actually wanted to change that particular joist direction or size, I could go submit and I can basically say, well, I want the joist to go another direction and you can change those joists. You can also change the size of the joist because it's still selected. Everything I'm working on now is just that particular joist. What I'll do, I'll just scroll in here first. You'll notice that it has the size of the joist on there. However, if I change my size of my joist to say a 300 by 63 or a 12 by three, I can go submit choose the joist direction, and you'll notice it changed the size of the joist. It changed them in 2D, but it also changed them in 3D. You notice I'm clicking my center scroll wheel button there to navigate around, and my joist changed in height, and they changed in width. So that basically they're parametric. Now let's look at going back to our floor plan here. So I'm gonna go, if I click my 2D mode again, it's gone to 3D, and if I click it again, it's gone to 2D and I'm going to go down and I'm going to start to draw some joists here. And where if I start drawing here, this is still selected. So I actually need to use space bar, click into a blank space, and now I'm actually starting to draw again. So if I click submit here, I can choose my joist direction first. And you'll notice I'm going up on my green direction there. I'm gonna take a bit of a guess here and I'll show you how to actually deal with that later. And now you'll notice that I'm actually going on a red axes here. I could actually go off axes if I wanted to, or if I had a lot of distractions, it was kind of hard to figure out. I'd find my red axes, push shift, and then I would hold it and stop it to where I wanted those joists to finish. And then I would left click and bang, I have joists. Now in 2D mode, you're looking at those joists like that. We'll talk about how to change colors later in the video, but you'll notice that I now have joists in 3D. These joists are now estimatable as well. So we'll get into that as we move forwards in the tutorial. One other thing that I really think is important is that that is kind of the slow way to draw joists, but it's probably easy. Now I'm going to get into drawing uh, joists uh, in another method uh, and basically it's from a face. So SketchUp has a, a, a rectangle tool up here and you can left click that tool and basically you can go down and you can start to trace around a model. So for instance, uh, here I might say, I want to draw a face from here to here. And if I actually click my space bar and I select that, you'll notice that there's actually a face. I actually drew a face there. Now, I can draw faces anywhere in my model or trace over things. And in this particular instance, my joists, I actually want to line them up with an offset. So I'm actually going to use the tape measure tool and I'm going to offset this wall here by 90 millimeters. There's a keyboard shortcut for the tape measure tool, which would be T. And I might want to line up with here as well. I'm still inside the tape measure tool, so therefore it's starting to add in uh, distances from a point. You'll notice I'm actually choosing the center of the line. If I actually went from the end of the line, it would be different. But I'm going to go from the center of the line, I'm going to go 90 millimeters and enter. 
I'm going to delete this original face, so I'll use spacebar and delete, and I'm actually going to go and draw a face from here to here, and then I'm going to draw another couple of faces and change the way my joist directions work. Okay, so once again, uh, I'm going to go to my rectangle tool there, and I could use R as a keyboard shortcut, and I'm going to select, say, from here to the outside of this wall here. I'm going to do it again over to here. If I want to line up with here, I can go shift. And now I have two faces, right? So what I can actually do is I can actually draw joists from these faces without having to go up and choose uh, the joist tool. So if I right click a face and I go down and I find my joists tool, floor joists, create joists, I can now simply choose the joist type I want to do and I can simply choose the joist direction and bang, it drew my joist. I can do the same here. If I select this face, so spacebar select, I can go submit and I can now put my joist in an opposing direction. All right. If I wanted to look at that top down parallel projection, I can click 2D plan twice and I can select what I want to look at, right click and I can go zoom selection. And now you notice that I have joists in multiple things. It's a good idea to practice that. It's okay to make mistakes. If you want to and you don't want to draw over a plan, you can simply use the rectangle tool or R as a keyboard shortcut and you can start drawing some rectangles. And I recommend this is a good way to do it. And even if you want to draw a rectangle inside of a rectangle, you'll notice that it has faces, edges, and so on. And you'll find out more about this in the Getting Started with Plusbeak video. I'm going to quickly draw uh, some joists in here and we'll talk about this in a bit more detail uh, as we move along in the tutorial. Right, bang, and there we go. We have joists on faces. We can do multiple faces at the same time. So right click, uh, floor joists, create joists, and it's going to draw on several faces at the same time, which makes it really quick. It saves you going and, and opening and closing different things. There you go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is creating a joist layout and to do that we need to create scenes. Now I'm going to talk to you about scenes and, and roughly explain what they do as a start. So you'll notice at the top here we have, I've already preset some scenes because it's prompting me to tell you what we're going to do at a time. So you'll notice that they're saving different locations inside of a plan. Okay, so there's the joist we drew earlier. Now to create a joist layout, obviously we're going to need to look at certain sections of the plan because it could be multi-story uh, building and we might want to look at level one, two, three, and we might want to plot them in a set of plans. So let's have a look at how we go about creating a scene uh, so that we can uh, make it easier to develop 2D drawings. All right, so inside of Plusbeg, you'll notice that it has this scene tool. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it does. If I click on this scene tool, Inside of here, what it basically does is it knows that a joist is a joist and frames a frame and a roof's a roof. So we can organize that for you. And if we click in this drop down at the top here, you'll notice it has several different scene types. Now all will create every scene that's available. A little bit harder to navigate, but probably gives you more functionality. In this particular instance, we're going to create framing because we're talking about joists and it's going to make it easier for us. I'm going to go submit. And you'll notice across the end here, it created these scenes for me. And if I went to joists only, it's only going to look at floor joists. So if I looked at that maybe in a more detailed model and I went to all, this is actually a full BIM model uh, that has been used to generate a set of plans. And if I looked at my framing, it's turned my roof trusses off and it's just showing me all of the framing in this project. If I just looked at roof framing, it's just showing me trusses. And if I just looked at joists only, it's just showing me joists. So basically, a scene is actually uh, uh, remembering what's showing on screen, but also it can remember a location, it can remember hidden geometry, it can remember styles, it can remember a whole lot of different things. I'm going to show you how to actually create your own scenes and how to go about that. So uh, just stick with me. We'll go back to our original plan model there, here. And we might say that, uh, in plan set number one, we actually just want to look at uh, this set of plans. 
So I've already created my scenes and I'm actually on Joyce only. And basically what that's done is it's turned layers or tags on and off so that we can actually uh, just view certain geometry. And because we've only drawn Joyce in here, we don't have other geometry to deal with. But I need to explain that a little bit more. Basically, if we did have other geometry, uh, we had roofs and so on, it's turned a thing off called a layer uh, or a tag. And you'll notice on my default tray here that I have different things inside of here. Now, because my model doesn't actually have roofs and so on, uh, you wouldn't see them if I go to all anyway. So if I go to all, basically it's got the same thing. However, if I go back to my other model and I go to all, it's turned on different layers and tags. And this is a really good way to navigate. So if I said here, I wanted to turn off, say, uh, my roof. It turned off my roof, sheathing, waterproofing, and so on. And these layers that were created using the scene manager are actually turning those things off automatically for you. In some cases, you might want to hide geometry and just show particular geometry. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so I might not want anything else in this model other than just these particular joists here, right? So what I can do is I can select all, which would be control A on your keyboard. And if I push shift, I can just deselect this one here and I could basically go right click and I could hide everything inside of this model other than that set of joists. And basically it enables me just to view or look at a certain section of the model. So I'm going to select it, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go zoom selection and I'm going to look at it in 2D mode. Right, and you'll notice in 2D mode I can't see it because 2D mode's gone back to my origin. So if I go shift Z, I'm now zoomed my selection, I can now zoom in here and I can go up to here and I can go right click and I can add a scene. Now, in some cases, this is something to watch out for, it may not actually have had scenes remembered. So you need to go to learn about scenes inside of uh, your, uh, inside of the Pluspect training manual. And you can look at that on YouTube. However, I'm going to just go in here, I'm gonna go down and quickly show you how to do it. Scenes, and you'll notice that it has this little box. It may not be there, right? Scenes, if I click that box, it's opened up and it's got camera location. If I tick camera location and I go right click and update, there's several things that it's, up, it's updated. In this case, it was updated the camera location. However, if I go back in here and it said hidden objects or hidden geometry, it's now remembered that everything else I hid is supposed to be turned off. So I need to go and right click and update my scene. So I go right click, update scene. And therefore, if I was over, say, here, or here or anywhere else, I can go back to that scene and it's nothing else is inside of my model, okay? That's something really important to know. You can go back and watch this several times and give that another try yourself. I suggest actually having a model open up and watching this tutorial on another screen because there's a lot in it, but it makes it really easy to navigate and create Joyce when you understand how scenes work. Now, if I were to actually have this um, particular joist layout in a set of 2D plans with a template and my logo and letterhead and everything else I require, basically what I would do is I would actually use uh, my uh, 2D construction document export tool. And this is only in, in SketchUp Pro. Uh, so if you're using SketchUp Make, you won't have this functionality. Uh, and you can basically click here and you can choose a scene and paper size and everything you require. Now, I'm not gonna go through how to do this and start plotting plans for you, but if you go up to the uh, tutorial at the top here, it'll actually show you how to use scenes uh, to create joist layouts uh, inside of uh, Pluspec. It's probably something that I think we can concentrate on more important things and that's getting the joists together and getting the bill of quantities there. But just quickly, choose a paper size. You could use your own template for your layout. You can choose leader sizes, dimensioning, uh, and you can choose, probably the most important thing here is you would actually choose how many viewports you want on a page. So for instance, I might just want just this viewport here and I might actually want to rotate the page, but inside of the page, I'm gonna choose the last scene that we created, which was scene 24. 
and I could create several pages. Uh, so I could add another page, add a new page, and use any of these scenes in here, and they'll export to my 2D drawing. Good tip is to go and click on top of the question mark and hover over different items because it'll tell you what to do when you want to create a joist layout. Okay, the next one I'm going to go through is pretty straightforward, and that's basically my joist spacing. You'll notice that my joist spacing has started from here and it has an unequal spacing down here. And if I dimensioned it, you'll see what I mean. Uh, D is usually my shortcut for dimension. You would actually use uh, dimensioning, which would be in Windows Large, sorry, right click up here, and you would be looking for Large Toolset. And Large Toolset has a dimensioning tool there. I've used created a keyboard shortcut, which I uh, do think that you should do. You can look up a tutorial on creating keyboard shortcuts. So my first joist spacing was here, which is outside of joist to inside of joist or center to center, basically. And right, same thing. And it started at 450 from here or whatever dimension you put in when you created your joist. Uh, and it worked out with an unequal spacing at the end here. What if I wanted my joist to start from here? Well, let's have a quick look. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my joist tool and I'm going to just quickly draw some floor joists. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my joist direction go, uh, let's click submit. My door, joist direction go this way and I'm going to go to the left, All right? You'll notice that my little arrow started from this end here. However, if I went down here in spacebar and go submit again, if I go up here and I go to the right, it's pretty straightforward, that you'll notice that now my joist direction is starting from right to left. It's a really easy one. Uh, if you do make a mistake and I actually wanted to change where I, my joist from starting from, I can just go submit and I can basically go, I want my joist directions to go from top down or submit bottom up, and this arrow is helping you understand where those joist directions are started from. Next thing I'm going to talk about is starting with the double joist, finishing with the double joist and so on. So I'm gonna go back over, we don't need this uh, top section here at the moment, I'm just gonna hide that, and we're going to, you'll notice inside of my joist tool that I have start with single and end with single, and in this case you'll notice it started with a single joist and it ended with a single joist. Right, so if I wanted to change that, I can basically click on my drop down and go double. And now I've started with a double. And if I go submit and yeah, you'll notice that I now have a double and my joist spacing started from here. If I went submit and I did it the other way, I started with a double joist and finished. And the same would go if I wanted to finish with a double, uh, submit. And in some cases, you're going to want to start with none. So uh, and you can do this, it's, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, none. And I'm going to finish with none. And you might do that if you're creating a joist layer in between different items. Go submit and here. Now, if you're drawing joist from scratch, obviously you want to get outside of that joist and go submit and choose your joist direction, choose your set outside. And I actually started with none and finished with none. All right, so now we're actually gonna talk about adding beams or extra joists, um, miscellaneous items, basically. Uh, so I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna open up my top section again, and you'll notice here that I have the option to draw a single joist, draw a single beam, All right? So I can actually go here and go draw, and what it's gonna do is gonna give me the option to choose what type of joist or beam I want to draw with, uh, and I can choose an LVL, I joist, even a steel beam, universal beam, whatever it is. So if you've got an engineer's set of drawings, you might actually want to have a, a universal beam there. You can choose your size, metric or imperial. And I'm gonna choose this one here. And I'm actually gonna go, and I'll just draw a beam out in space at the moment. So let's go to here. Right, it drew my beam in there. If I go to my 3D view, you'll notice that my beam is actually there. Now you can do, pretty cool things with beams. You can actually select the beam, right click and go down to extend beams or split beams. So I can extend it to the face of here and you'll notice it extend those beams. There's more on that in the split and extend beam tutorial. 
uh, but it is a good thing to know. Now let's look at actually adding a beam. Now in traditional software and you're working in 2D, it can kind of be hard to get your placement right or understand how the beam interacts with the joist. Uh, in this case, I think that it's a lot easier. Let's have a quick look, draw a single beam. We'll go back to that universal beam and then I'll draw in an LVL. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, move over to my uh, joist there and you know some in 3D view, you can get to 3D view like this or you just send a mouse scroll button until it clicks. And I actually want that beam to sit below. So I'm actually clicking my down arrow on my keyboard and it's justifying where my beam is going to sit from. And you'll also notice that this beam is probably not going to work with these joists, but it's something good you want to know at this stage, right? So I'm just going to quickly just draw it in there and we're going to have a look at it. We probably all know, or we should all know, that that beam actually can't cut into certain distances on this particular joist type. It's different in solid joists and so on, but in this particular joist type, it's a problem. So we can do two things. We can select the beam we can move the beam down into a lower position to see whether it'll actually work. And I can move the beam to the position it actually should be, which could contradict what is shown in the engineer's plans, but you found a problem and it's gonna solve issues on site. If for instance, you needed a heavier beam for some reason, you can actually right click the beam and you can change the beam size, edit beam, okay. And you can now go in and choose the size of the beam that we had here and we can choose another size. And we can go submit. And you'll notice that my beam has now changed sizes. But because I drew the beam from the top down instead of the bottom up, it actually went down. So you can move that. So uh, M is a keyboard shortcut or move. And I can actually select the location I want it to go from. And you'll notice it's trying to go on the red axis. If I push my up arrow, I can choose the location where I want that beam to sit there and that would probably actually work for that particular joist but it's important that you know uh, what the particular joist type you're using uh, and and whether they can notch it or not. Use it in the manufacturer's instruction manuals. Now I also mentioned that I would add an LVL and these are obviously easy beams and if we we're working on a set of plans obviously beams are going to be cut through the center of joist and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So I'm going to go back to my draw beam and I'm going to choose an LVL in this particular instance. You can choose any of these beam types. Uh, and we might just choose I don't know, one that's large enough to cover the job. And I'm going to go down, I'm going to zoom in. You can still do this in 2D mode, of course. Uh, I'm using my down arrow to justify where I want my beam to go. And I'm going to do that there. Now what would happen if I actually needed a beam in the center of a joist? Now let's see if we got our, our plan here. So I'm going to actually go back to my 2D plan here. And in this case here, we might have had a set of joists running from here to here and we need a beam running through the center. I'm going to go and quickly use my rectangle tool. I'm going to draw rough location for these joists. I'm going to draw these joists, right click, floor joist, create joists. I could have just clicked submit. And I'm going to put my joist in in a left to right direction. And I actually am going to need a steel beam through the center of these joists. So what I'm first thing I'm going to do just to make it a little bit easier for me is I'm actually going to add my beam first. And I'm going to use an LVL through here. So I'm going to go to draw single beam. And I'm going to uh, choose my beam size, which I'll use the last one that I, I had there. And I'm going to draw this beam from here. Now I want to go on 2D to make sure I've got the right justification there for the beam. I do. And I'm actually just going to put this beam in on my green axis shift. Right. And you'll notice that the beam uh, is actually cut through the joist and that is not how we're actually going to put it together on site. So how do I actually go about cutting these joists? Well, there's two ways I could have actually drawn a set of joists to the left, a set of joists to the right, but that means redrawing. Um, you could actually leave them. So for instance, if the length of these joists is actually easier to stack on a truck, add that joist and the carpenters to cut them on site, you could do that as well, or you can actually cut them. So let's have a look and it's actually called adding a void. So if I right click my joist, go to floor joist, and you'll notice that I actually have add void, right? So I can go through and I can simply select where I want these joists to cut. It's easy for me to go out here, but you can choose anywhere. And basically, 
you can add a void which will actually cut these joists for me uh, zoom in there and go back to where I started I could just if you notice in the bottom you also have help tips text I could have just pushed enter and basically it will cut those joists for me and this is going to lead us into adding joist connectors and brackets but as you can see I now have all of my joists cut you'll notice that I haven't gone all the way through and cut this last one here I should have brought my mouse further forwards but you'll know you'll see what's happened and if we actually look inside of here and I actually go uh, hide rest of model or control hide I've set up a shortcut you'll see it's cut all of those joists if I click outside of I can put my beam back in and away we go if we wanted to look at it in our 2d mode 2d mode and basically we now have it here and we could create that as a scene as well before we finish there's one last thing that I want to go through and what happens if we have a, a, an irregular shape of joists so I'm going to choose an L shape here and I'm going to choose uh, say uh, I'm going to use C as a keyboard shortcut for circle and I've got a circle there that's 24 sides I can add all of my joists in one go to these in one go so I'm going to choose both so shift I've selected both so spacebar shift selected two I'm going to go submit and I'm actually going to add my joists right it basically cut all of my joists to that round face it also cut them to the L shape now one thing that you will need to know is you would need to add another joist in here because it's just gone to the spacings I've selected so I can go in here and go draw single joist and choose the size joist I need it could be an LVL it could be a beam it could be anything and I'm going to go submit and I'm going to just so I can see which side my my joist is justified there You'll notice I'm going to go my down arrow. So it's either from outside of beam, center of beam, top of beam, or bottom of beam. And I can add that LVL or any type of joist that I chose there. One thing that you will notice if you actually wanted to move these joists, select them, so spacebar select. If I want to move the joist, that other joist is disconnected. So I'm going to go escape. And I'm actually going to, you'll notice it's still selected. I'm going to push shift and select my second joist. And I can go right click and I can go down to my joist and I can add object to joist it could be anything in this case it's a joist so when I move these joists everything's tied together okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about adding connectors to joist now you'll notice here when I cut this earlier uh, I'm just going to close that down that I cut a beam uh, through my joist however I'm going to need connectors in this particular instance so here I have uh, draw joist hangers right if I select these joists and go draw joist hangers you'll notice that it's opened up a dialogue now in some cases if you drawn the joist at the same time it will actually select the beam height for you automatically now, in this particular instance, I need to actually choose my joist size, right? So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go uh, beam height, which you can see here is 300, but if you're using Imperial or whatever size you're using, uh, it would be uh, type that measurement in. And by 63, obviously you write in millimeters or centimeters if you're using so if I was doing an imperial model I could write in six inches or 12 inches or whatever it is and you can choose a component type you will notice that we'll have manufacturers products in here shortly and you can choose a symbol that you would like to associate with those joist hangers now something to look out for with uh, joist hangers is you actually place them from the center of the joist and it's important that the spacing is actually correct if you didn't want to have the last joist hanger because for instance uh, you might not have an even spacing of joists uh, you can also uh, select uh, these things now I'm going to go below points because it's easy for me in this instance to actually draw my joist hanger from the center of my joist and I'm going to move it towards the spacing that I've chosen now you'll notice it's got an arrow there that's telling me what side those joists hangers are going to be uh, done so if I click my down arrow it will justify 
which way those joist hangers are going to go. And I'll just stop here. I'm actually going to go to the center of my joist here and we'll have a look at what happened. He put those joist hangers in there. They're also quantified in the takeoff, which we'll get to later. Um, but let's say for instance, you know, it would have been good if I had an example there of a last joist not being uh, a standard spacing, but let's just pretend here for a second. I've left clicked in the center of my joist and I'm gonna to go to a strange location, click my down arrow, and I'm actually going to put that one in there. What it did is where I clicked my last click is where it actually put the last hanger. So if I had it clicked here, the last hanger, as long as it wasn't over, the spacing would have gone there. If I had it clicked here, it would have been there. Right, pretty straightforward. Let's give it a try, guys. Uh, it's, it's easy enough to do. Uh, it's self-explanatory, but don't forget, in your, tu in your every tool, you have these orange uh, boxes that will actually show you what's going on in these particular locations. All right, is there anything else we wanna add there? I think that's pretty good for adding connectors. Uh, let's move on to adding voids. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is adding blocking to Joyce. Okay, there's two ways that you can do this. Uh, so we'll go back to our scene that we saved there before, and we're going to just quickly draw a set of Joyce here. I'm going to use a rectangle tool, I'm going to draw over a rectangle, and go right click, floor Joyce, create Joyce. Uh, while that's opening, I probably want to close my stair tool down. Close it down. Okay, and we're gonna choose a solid joist in this particular instance. And you'll notice in the bottom here, it has include blocking. So when I actually go through, I'm gonna go start with single uh, and end with none. And I'm gonna go submit. And I put that in there. I didn't have blocking ticked. So if I click include blocking, I can now choose the size of my blocking, go submit and add my blocking. Right, you notice it added a B in there to signify in your plan when you're doing your joist details uh, that you have blocking in those locations. However, there's another way of doing that. Now I can use Control Z to actually undo the last move. And I can actually go and add in an unequal spacing on my last joist just so you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna end with a single and I'm going to go submit and choose my joist spacing. Right, I actually still have my blocking turned on. Turn that off, submit again. It's good to know that you don't have to redraw, you can just click submit and, and make changes on the fly. And now I'm going to go in, I'm going to go draw blocking. Now I'm going to want to know the size of the joist that I chose, uh, which you can see is 140.35. It's remembered that here you can manually change them. My joist spacing has also been remembered. And essentially what I can do is I can go through and I, if I want to use the different size blocking and it's not unusual to do, uh, I could do that. Uh, I'm going to go submit and I'm going to choose the inside of my joist, really important. It's not like your joist hangers, which is from the center. And I'm going to move along. You'll notice that my arrow, which is luck, that my arrow is going the right way, but my down arrow would actually choose the location that's going to go. If I actually clicked on the inside of this joist, it would fill that in. However, let's see what happens when I go to my end joist there. You'll notice it cut my last block in as well. And when I do a bill of quantities, that will also be signified in that. However, a couple of inches off cut or, or millimeters off cut, it's not such a big deal. You don't have to add joists uh, in total uh, to the full thing. You can say, I wanna have a, a, a blocking just on two or every second, All right? It's pretty straightforward. If you make a mistake, you can use Control Z on your keyboard, or it might be Function Z on a Mac, and it will undo as you go. Control Z, there we go, All right? Pretty easy, adding blocking. So quick recap, blocking. Have a mess around with it, guys. Don't try and do a real plan with it to start. Just mess around like I am now. You can make mistakes, you can change them, you'll get used to using this tool and it becomes second nature in no time. Okay, so what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna add bearers to joists. Okay, so basically a bearer is a beam that's holding up, it could also be called a girder. So let's go back to the last set of joists that we drew, over here I think it was, and 
we can do it from scratch or we can use an existing um, set of joists that we've drawn. If I select these joists here and then I go back over to here and I go enable girders, oops, here it is here, enable girders, which is down the bottom, right? I can now choose to start with a single, end with a single. Uh, I can include a perimeter beam, which is basically going to give me the option to add another size around the size. Let's just see what happens when I do that. I go submit, I put that in there. You'll notice that I actually have uh, this perimeter beam according to this size and I have my girders or bearers according to this size there. And I'm gonna show you later how to go about changing colors of things. Um, so I can do that. However, if I turn off my uh, perimeter beam here and I go submit and I choose my joist direction again, you'll notice that it's now put a, a girder or a bearer on each end. If I look at it in 2D mode, you'll notice that I now have my layout there with my joist spacings and everything like that. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can go and also add a beam in particular locations if you wanted to, and then go back and have a right click add to joist uh, as well. There's, I don't think as much you can't do with this tool. It's very comprehensive. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about dimensioning joists. This is kind of a basic way uh, when we get into the layout side of things, you'll notice that there's a more comprehensive way of doing this and an auto um, labeling feature there as well. Uh, but at the moment, let's just make it really simple. I've created a keyboard shortcut. However, I'm going to show you a large tool set, which will be inside of here. There we go, large tool set. And you'll notice it has the dimension tool there, which I showed earlier. And essentially I can say dimension my joist spacing. I could uh, dimension my girder spacing, which is gonna be easier to get off axes there. Right. Basically all I'm doing is I, I clicked uh, that, I went left click, and I'm gonna do my unequal spacing here. Zoom in to where you want to dimension from. It's pretty straightforward. One thing with dimensions here, so say for instance this joist length, if I was just not wanting to use layout but just use this here, I might say, well, you can see that's my joist length, but I could also go, well, there's one, two, three, four, however many. I can actually click inside of this here and I can actually type. Let's have a quick go. It can be a little bit cumbersome. You'll notice here I've got 290 and I could say unequal spacing. I don't really recommend this, as, but you do need to know different things here. And it will do that. You can also go right click entity info and you can change the font uh, and everything inside of that particular dimension line. You can change the size, whether you just want it to a height and go okay, and it will change that around. And if you're going to just basically use SketchUp to, to create your choice layer, or you're gonna export a 3D model and just send it to the user, user's phone or the, the carpenter's phone. Um, I prefer, preferably, that is the way I do it. Uh, however, I do know that some people expect 2D plans uh, because they're not tech savvy. Let's not get into that. Uh, you can then go to your 2D mode or you'll also notice I actually have this tool here open, it's called Views. If I click this one here, it'll go to the top for me as well. And to get that, you go right click, go down and find Views you can turn views on and you can turn views off and you can dock them. Uh, it enables you to, to quickly navigate. The 2D mode tool is going to be a lot quicker because it will put, do it in parallel projection for you. Okay, the next thing we're going to get into is quantifying joists, getting order lengths from them, creating purchase orders uh, and a whole associating price. Uh, and in this model here, I can do it very, very quickly, is basically I can right click and I can just take off the selection in the bottom there. And basically it's only going to quantify what we're looking at here. And you'll notice in my framing tab is if I go in here, I can go in advanced choice uh, and you'll notice if I go edit see more, you'll notice that it's quantified what's inside of the model here. And because I'm just drawing random stuff here, it's, it's nothing, um, it's just to show you how to draw. Uh, you'll notice that it's actually come up with my order length is, in Australia, we can only buy six meter solid timber joists. 
So it actually came up red and went, well, you've got a problem. So I'd probably have to go and split the joists on a bearer uh, and then actually uh, purchase two smaller lengths of joists. Now, so basically if you go back in and split joists or you actually recreate those joists, uh, you can do that very, very easily. It's given me the number or the quantity of joists and it's given me the, it, sorry, bearers and girders and it's given me uh, the number of floor joists, how many I've got to cut, what actual length they cut out on site and what actual length they would be ordered if they were less than the minimum length we could do. So I'm going to explain that. Let's go back to say something that's probably more reasonable. An I joist or an LVL comes in a longer length. So if I actually went to here and I selected these joists, right, spacebar select, I can go right click, take off selection, and go to my framing again, and I can go edit, see more, and you'll notice that I have 32 joists in that string of joists. It's told me the size and the order length that they would do. So the cut length is 6.1 meters, or 6.109, and the order length is 6.3 because that's a standard size that you can purchase. Now, in your particular location, your suppliers might not supply 6.2s, they might supply 6.6s or 7.2s or 18 foot or 20 foot, whatever it might be, but all of that can be changed. And how you would do that is you'd go and you would export your order lengths and you'll go and re-import your order length. So I've actually exported my order lengths here before, and you'll notice in solid lumber in my area, I can use these increments and the maximum size of joists is six meters. So before, when you saw that that joist was red, it was above the maximum size. So it was notifying me that the joists there are drawn too long. So basically I made a mistake, edit my mistake, and then you can actually order those joists. LVLs, here's all my increments, and my I joists, here's my increments that I can actually purchase those in. I can also go what is a minimum length and I can type in minimum lengths of eye joists and so on or blogging, blocking or anything that's required. But the best way to probably understand this is to actually start small. You'll notice when I did this bill of quantities, I actually right clicked and I took off just one selection, which is handy because you can kind of figure out where you're at. But I can actually take the whole lot off as well. So if I just click take off up here, and I basically go, I've got frame advance ticked. I'm gonna untick it and I'm gonna go generate report and it's not gonna break it down into order lengths anymore. It's just gonna break it down into the actual lengths that are inside of the model. I'm gonna go inside of my framing here. You notice I've got beams and plates, joist, um, joist blocking and joist hardware. So the before in this tutorial, I showed you how to add in um, connectors uh, or joist hangers or joist brackets and you'll notice that it's now told me the size of those joist hangers that I put in there and how many I require. I could associate a price with them. Uh, they might be, I don't know, $5 each and it's going to create uh, three joist hangers at $5 is 15 and I've got eight here and these ones are a different size, probably a different price. We're going to say $7 and basically I can add a vendor here now and you want to go into the estimating um, tutorials at the top here and you will notice how to actually go and add and import vendors. You might buy them from MyTech or Simpson Strong Tie or any Prider, uh, whoever it may be. Uh, you would put that in there. You, would, you can associate what the information is you require and you can actually then generate a report and place those orders. Same goes with uh, your lumber or timber or joists or bearers or whatever it is you're going to do. I'm going to quickly just go into a new model so we can break this down just a little bit more to make it a bit simple. I'm going to draw in a rectangle and I'm going to type in the size. So I'm going to say 4 meters 700 and you can type in feet and inches, comma 4 meters 700, enter. And I now have a rectangle or a square which is 4 meters 700 by 4 meters 700. Right. I'm going to go and add my joists, so floor joists. Create joists. Inside of here, I'm going to choose my joist spacing, my joist type. I'm going to use an I joist here. And I'll have some girders in there and I'll space my girders at, I don't know, 2500 and go submit. Put in my joist direction and now I have my, my bearers or girders and joists. 
right? I'm going to do a takeoff of this model in its entirety. So click takeoff. You'll notice I haven't got framing advanced clicked. I'm going to show you what that means. Go takeoff. I have framing. Inside of here I have Joyce, edit see more, and you'll notice that it hasn't actually told me the name of the members. But I can actually click here and find members inside of my Joyce. Sorry. Uh, show all. Isolate on and off. According to what I select, it will actually give me the option. Isolate on and off. You'll notice, have a play with that. But I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do that. my estimate in uh, on these particular joists, but I want to know my joist length. So what I have to do is two ways I can go about it. I can go up to my settings here and I can click frame advanced and go generate report. It's going to update it and notice, notice inside of framing I now have advanced joist, edit see more and now it's got the labels that then called. Uh, you can go in and you can change the, the name of those particular items. So I've just clicked on settings there. And if I went to my floor joist, you'll notice it has a number associated with the members. You can change the name of those members inside of there. Let's just quickly go back and add a bit of a price to some of these joists. Uh, I can add a vendor and a cost code. I'm going to go back and I'm going to not do an advanced takeoff. Whoops, wrong button. Here, no framing advance, update report. And now I can go and go uh, edit see more, I can associate a price. So the size of the lumber that you've chosen, type in your price, I'm gonna take a guess here guys, don't use this price because it's a total guess. You can give it a vendor uh, and you can put in all of your prices and it's going to calculate a total cost of the job that you're doing. So if you've take off selection, it'll give you the, the price of the joist you've selected or the item you've selected. If you're going to do a takeoff of the whole job, you'll go and add your prices in there. You only add your prices once and it will update. Just one more thing on pricing is if I actually select that joist here and I go up to my dollar tool, it's going to choose everything inside of here and I can set my price here. Very easy, right? Uh, and set price and you'll notice it's remembered that. Your prices are always remember when you want to update your price, you can export your prices, update all of your prices and basically keep on going and making sure that when you're quoting your joists that they're at the right price. Okay. Okay, there's one more thing that I promised at the beginning. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it in too much detail, but we now have an IFC mold that's imported. This has come from Revit, this particular, and this is basically exactly how it came out, is exactly how I've imported it. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to know about IFC. I'm gonna close this down. Uh, now, you'll notice that the whole model is grouped. So if I move the whole model together, it's fine. And because it's been done in IFC, it has containers, and the containers inside of containers, and containers inside of containers, and it can be a bit of a pain in the backside, but it's not too hard. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the model and I'm going to go down to dynamic components and component attributes. You'll notice that here's the name of this particular model in its entirety and if I click inside of it, it's going to start to give me different properties according to the IFC attributes that have been set to it in Revit or whatever the end user set to them. Now it's kind of a bit of a pain in the backside because you've got so many layers here. My advice is to, I'm gonna go back outside of it, so I'm clicking outside of the model and getting back to scratch. My advice is to go through and go right click and explode model, right? And you wanna keep exploding it until you get down to the geometry you actually require. You can also just double click inside of it and keep on clicking and clicking and clicking until it actually chooses one item. So there's several different ways to go and delete geometry out of it. All of this purple geometry when it comes out of Revit is usually spaces, which is something we don't really need to know about in this particular instance. If you make a mistake and you actually delete the wrong item, you can go Control Z and get back. I'm gonna just quickly go through here and uh, just get rid of some of the rubbish that I don't need. So basically all of the purple. If I'm, remember before we spoke about hide, uh, so I can actually go right click and hide different things so I can actually get down to. This is the hardest thing about dealing with an IFC model. 
All right, I'm going to delete that out. You could delete the wrong things by mistake. If you do, go Control Z, right? Hide or delete, right? And I'm actually starting to delete some of the geometry out of that that I don't want. And because I just basically want to um, go to there and I can go edit, unhide, last to bring back those walls, right? As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here. So to get to it, I actually need to hide. So I'm using a keyboard shortcut as hide. You can right click and go hide, delete, uh, anything that's purple basically, or anything that's when you select it, it's actually just an IFC space, All right? Uh, I need to get my roof off here and hide it so I can get rid of the rest of this stuff. And you can actually, get that there, go hide, All right? All I really need to know is my walls and my floor height. Hide that. All right, it's kind of painful, guys. I'm just pushing delete as I go, getting rid of all of these IFC spaces. Ideally, if you're talking to your grass person or architect or whoever's drawn these plans, get them not to put IFC spaces in there. It makes it a lot easier. You'll also notice you've got entourage like trees and so on. Go and delete those. You just don't need them. As I said before, if you go through and delete something you don't need, and I'll do that, say now, I'm gonna select, I actually do need that wall. If I delete it and I go Control Z, it'll bring it back. So now I would hide it, right click hide or keyboard shortcut H if you set one up, and I can go and delete the spaces that I want out of this model. Uh, and then what I'm gonna quickly do is organize this model to make it a little bit easier for you to to navigate and so on. I'm gonna go edit, unhide, all. You'll notice that I've still got some hidden geometry inside of there. I really probably should have kept going and right click explode model, but I'm just trying to do this as quick as I can. I'm gonna go in here and go explode. And now I've started to break things down into what they are. I've got a container there. Again, if I move the whole model, it's, it's all together. I'm gonna to right click, explode. And now you can see I'm starting to break it down into walls and roofs and so on. The best way to go about organizing this model is to actually use uh, the levels and layers tool. And what you wanna do is I might say slab, which is my ground floor slab. I'm gonna add a level, uh, ground floor walls. Uh, I'm gonna add another level, I'm gonna call it floor. Uh, I'm gonna add another level, it's gonna be first floor walls. And I'm going to add another level and it could be roof. All right. I'm going to save and update that. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and organize my model into those particular items. So I've got a roof selected there. To double check it, I can move it. Yep, that's my roof. Escape, I can go right click, assign level, assign it to a roof. I can then basically go and go refresh over here and I can turn my roof off. Right, you can see I'm viewing hidden geometry there. I'm gonna go view uh, hidden geometry. It's actually because it was still selected, so that wasn't correct. And you'll notice a lot of mistakes happen like this in Revit. Uh, I don't know whether it's because it's harder to use or whatever it is, but you do see a lot of stuff that's just not supposed to be that way. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add this to my roof because it's my fascia. And I'm gonna push shift and select multiple items there. You'll notice that that's that is grouped with other items. You can see there is a problem here, guys. Uh, I'm gonna have to explode that as well. Explode, right? And now I can actually select that, put it on my roof layer, assign level, assign roof. I can turn my roof off and on and it's starting to get rid of that geometry. Uh, I've still got eaves in here. I could have added more there, but to me, I'm only doing joists here. Assign level, assign it to roof. All right, turn my roof off and on so I can get rid of it. Click outside of it, delete anything you don't need. I'm gonna go through here, uh, turn my roof off again, there. Right, and now I'm actually starting to get down to business. This is, these are my first floor walls, right? You probably spend a little bit more time than I did and delete anything you don't need. I'm gonna go right click, assign level, and I'm going to call it first floor walls, right? I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to turn my first floor walls off I'm going to turn my roof off and now you can see I got to my ground floor now I might have accidentally taken 
the floor with it. Uh, if that's the case, what I can do is I'll just, while I'm here, delete rid of any of this rubbish. Get rid of all that, get rid of this. All right, and this looks like a ceiling. I'm not going to need that. Um, you can see I lost that wall there before because I hit it. So view hidden geometry or objects. I can right click and unhide it. I know I'm going through this quick guys, but it's kind of, you know, it's just to help you get a start. If you're pretty switched on, you'll get the hang of this as I'm doing it. Uh, delete that one there. Right now I have my ground floor walls. I'm going to go through, I'm going to select all of them. If I was smart, I'd probably go and put my stairs on another level. So I'll go shift and I'm going to go uh, right click, assign level, ground floor walls, right? And the benefit of this now is that I can now go and turn my ground floor walls off and I can turn my first floor back on and you'll notice that I actually had my floor by mistake inside of that group there. So I'm actually going to select it. Uh, it's actually inside of a, a nested group, guys. I hope. I'm not confusing you here. Space bar here. You'll notice that it's nested, so everything is together. I'm going to go right click and I'm going to explode it. Uh, I haven't done this before in this model, so I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. And basically, I'm going to go here, assign a level, and I'm going to go to floor. Right. And now, if I turn my floor off, you can see that I now have my floor, my walls, my slab separate. So I can select my slab. You'll notice that there's other things in there. Or a quick away space bar, shift, select, probably more accurate way, depending on how accurate you need to be. If you don't need the geometry, as I said before, just delete it. If this was drawn with plus you wouldn't have any of these problems. It automatically groups this geometry. All right, right click, assign level slab, turn my slab off. And you'll see if I've missed anything, you can see there, one more on slab, right click, assign level slab, turn my slab off. And now you can see that I have what is required to get down to the nuts and bolts. If I actually wanted to add another level, I can go plus stairs and add my stairs to there as well. All right, so let's get down to nuts and bolts here of what we're actually gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna turn my first floor walls off. I'm gonna turn my ground floor walls on. Okay, maybe I didn't assign that because it was inside of a group. I exploded the group before. I'm going to go and reassign it. Make sure I got everything. Right click, assign level, first floor walls, turn my first floor walls on and off. Right, and now I can start to see where my joists are going to go. Delete anything that I don't need. Right, and now I could actually start to go through and create joists. Depending on the level of experience that the Revit user has, uh, you will depend on how easy this is. Uh, this is a reasonably experienced Revit user, but as you can see, it's not designed to build, it's more designed to draw, and then they try and figure out quantities from here. God knows how. Uh, delete that. Right, okay, I'm just gonna draw a couple of joists in here for you guys. Let's have a look. Uh, floor joists. Joyce. Now I can assign these to level as I draw if I want to, um, but I'm not going to get into that. If you go to the levels tool and watch the levels tool tutorial, you'll understand how to assign as you draw. I'm going to quickly go through here. I'm not even going to choose my joist size. I'm going to go through and uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go from joist from, you notice that they don't even actually have cavities in their walls. And I go from here across to say here, I could type in a measurement. Uh, so it's gonna be that plus 160, so it's gonna be three meters. Uh, I'm gonna write in 3200. Right, and my joist direction is gonna go this way. Right, I'm gonna look for the red axes. Yeah, oh, sorry, green axes, shift. And I'm gonna run my joist to this wall here. Right, I didn't want bearers. As we saw before, I can turn those off. Go submit. Click primary beams, if I've got it, sorry, submit. Right, and now they're sitting at the height that's drawn in the model. 
it's better than drawing the plan from scratch. I'll, I'll give it that. There's one other way that you can do it uh, that is a lot quicker, and that's to try and just get a DWG floor plan, trace over it, and then cross-reference it with a model. The main reason why you would want to see the height of the joist versus the floor inside of it to ensure that the joist that, that you're allowing for will actually fit in the building envelope. I hope it helps out guys, it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky one that, but you can use geometry from other software such as Revit, Archicad, MicroStation, or any IFC geometry, and you can draw over it inside a plus spec, and you can do it reasonably efficiently and have a detailed federated model, and you can send it back to the Revit user. Because plus specs creating it in IFC, they can now see how your joist detailing works with their model. All right guys, take it easy. All right, on a finishing note, guys, I did mention that I'd show you how to change the colors of items inside of a project. Now, uh, this one here really only has one plus pick material, but it could work there as well. I'm going to show you default tray. I'm going to pin the tray. I'm going to go to edit. Sorry, I'm going to go to materials here. If you don't have it open, go up to uh, window, default tray, and you will notice that you can turn on different items on and off. Okay, so that'll open my default tray. I've opened my default tray, I've gone to materials. I'm now going to use this eyedropper and I'm going to select a material and I'm going to go edit. And I can use a color wheel, RGB, HSB or whatever it is. And I'm gonna use color wheel and I can basically go and change the color of individual items to whatever color I choose. I can then go and select other things. So for instance, this is the Revit model. I'm gonna go edit. Right. If I went to a more complex model with more materials, you'll notice that I have already have several different colors in there. I can go in here and I can go select. So my framing, I might want to change my framing, say green, edit. Makes it very easy to identify which products are different products according to their material type. And you might want to use that in your layout. So for instance, if you went to 2D mode, and we looked at it here, you can see, well, that doesn't really work so great. I might want to change my joist size or joist color, select, edit, and choose a good color that enables them to stand out. All right, guys, hope it helps. Uh, if you've got any questions, ask them below. If you like the video, push like. If you dislike it, actually push dislike and tell us why, because if we can improve, uh, it's going to make it better for you and better for us. All right, guys, all the best. Cheers.